So Michael Christian is with us, the match review officer. Welcome, Chris O. Hi, Matt. Lots to talk about here on AFL.com.au today, beginning with Nick Nananui, the West Coast Eagles superstar. You've suspended him, or offered him at least, a one-game ban. Yeah, for a dangerous tackle. Uh, the provisions around dangerous tackles talk about whether it's unreasonable in the circumstances. And you can see uh, Nick grabbing Carl Amon here and driving him into the ground with excessive force. And that clearly comes under the category of a dangerous tackle. Once the conduct is determined, then it's a level of impact. And certainly uh, the grading was medium, and that was consistent with the medical report we received from Port Adelaide. Amon came off the ground shortly after that tackle, uh, certainly enough to get into the medium grading. What was Nick's alternative, though? In terms of the tackle? Yeah. Well, what we'd like to see, instead of driving into the ground with arms pinned with excessive force, we'd like to see Nick try and roll him um, and come down pretty much at the same time rather than being on top of him and driving him with excessive force into the ground. So that's the alternative to try and roll with the tackle. At some point, does the size difference between the two players come into it? Because Nick obviously came towards the ground with that force potentially because he obviously is a big guy. So you're suggesting that Aaron Sanderlands, whenever he bumps and bumps people in the head, that it's okay because he's tall? Not at all. I'm just providing <laughs> a counter-argument, Chris. That no. People are going to look at that and go, well, what well, would Nick have done? I mean, the, the reality is that, unfortunately, in our game, you've got to, players have to show a duty of care. And it's, it's not within the rules where we can allow the taller players to go around and, for example, bump players in the head just because they're taller. I mean, the game would turn into... Carnage. So the reality is that each player must show a duty of care. And in this particular case, don't think that Nick showed uh, a duty of care towards Carl Amon. Uh, it, the tackle was unreasonable in the circumstances in that he drove him into the ground with excessive force. And to answer your question, he needed to roll with the tackle and not drive with excessive force. That was, uh, that's the answer. All right, there's your explanation from Michael Christian. There is lots more to talk about, though. Tom Hawkins, we spoke about umpire contact last week, you've referred this straight to the tribunal, so obviously you're limited in what you can say. Well, the, the reality is that the guidelines say that if you intentionally touch an umpire, it's automatically referred to the tribunal. And in our determination, we concluded that Tom intentionally touched umpire Margetts, and as a consequence, it goes to the tribunal tomorrow night. All right, so that will play out tomorrow night, as you say, about five yeah. o'clock at the tribunal. Now, Scott Thompson from North Melbourne, no case to answer for this contact with Callum Sinclair. Yeah, I think Thompson, there's no doubt as Sinclair tries to gather the, the football, it just comes off the top of his fingertips. Um, didn't believe there was an overly degree of force with, with Thompson. Um, he almost touched the ball. And it's interesting, Sinclair coming off there with a the blood nose. The, the nose was bleeding, in fact, before that uh, particular okay. um, incident. So didn't think that, I um, thought it was a genuine enough attempt from Thompson in terms of him trying to, trying to swat the ball. Now, Jesse Hogan, he's been in the spotlight for this all weekend, but we've got some extra vision uh, from the goalpost, which actually shows there was a bit more force than perhaps people thought. Yeah, look, it, it's a really interesting one, this. Um, the, sta the, the guidelines around staging is that you must excessively exaggerate. So it's okay to exaggerate, but you're not allowed to excessively exaggerate. So that's a subjective measure. But it's clear that there is some high contact from Carlisle in a grabbing motion to uh, uh, around the neck region of Hogan. And as a consequence, Hogan goes back, gets straight back up. But umpire McInerney, who has umpired over 400 games, was four or five metres away, saw the high contact and appropriately and correctly paid the free kick. All right, so being the devil's advocate, should Carlisle have been looked at? Did you look at him? Absolutely, absolutely we did. Um, but again, as I said, it was more of a, a grabbing motion. It was high, but didn't believe that there was enough force to sustain a charge against Carlisle. All right, let's quickly take a look at the fines. Obviously, Tom Hawkins has already accepted a $2,000 rough conduct fine, and there's plenty of others there as well to look at, including another umpire contact one there with David Armitage. Uh, just on that Hawkins, the other Hawkins incident, which was... I guess the lead up to what yes. then happened with the umpire contact, uh, that was a fairly clear cut rough conduct case. Oh, look, I don't know that they're all clear cut, <laughs> but the reality is that Tom was very late. Um, the ball had come right down um, and away from him. Uh, he'd taken two and a half steps and then raised the knee. Didn't think it was a realistic attempt to try and spoil or, or mark. So at the end of it, um, deemed it to be rough conduct. I think the other important thing here is that Tom did take his eyes off the ball 
a fair way and before the ball had actually been marked. So from that perspective, um, believed it was a careless and therefore rough conduct. All right, Chris. So thank you very much for that. A Pleasure, robust man. discussion today with Michael Christian, the Match Review Officer. Thanks for watching.